Hey guys, I thought I'd try something a little different in this video. I've done so many videos on techniques and technical stuff and the science. I thought I'd try a little come in in the morning, nine o'clock AM. First thing I do is obviously I look at the tanks. Lights have been on for about an hour. They ramp up from about eight o'clock AM. And I just check the tanks out. Some things aren't opened up yet. Yeah, some things are. So this right here is something I do in the morning. This is my nori from yesterday, and I replace that. I put nori in every day in the morning with these two magnets. So I take this old piece out, and I put a new one in, and I'll show you what I do here in the morning. And this is the type I use. I get this off Amazon, and I keep it refrigerated. It comes in a large sheet like this, and I fold this in half and cut it apart. There's actually a textured side and a glossy side. I like to face the textured side out. I just think it makes it easier for the fish to pull at it on the textured side, so for whatever reason. So I fold it up. It doesn't have to be perfect. It just has to be wide enough and then I bend it in half, put this part facing down in here, and then I stick that in like that, and this flaps over so it makes a nice pocket. These are the epoxy coated magnets. And I put it down inside, slide it down, and these magnets hold it really well. And that's the food for the tang and my fox face for the day. By the end of the day, that's all gone. I always open my window. Depending on how cold it is out will depend on how much I open it, but today it's supposed to be up to 60 Fahrenheit. I even turn my fan on low setting to keep the air circulating. The tanks generate a lot of heat because of the water evaporation. So believe it or not, the window wide open in a fan is just what it needs in here. And I told you about pH and air circulation. Tuesday afternoon, guys, around 2.30, I come in and I do an inspection. Always inspect. See if things are looking okay. Nothing crazy is happening. I always like to check out my refugium to see the uh, little pods swimming around. This is really growing in fast now. I'll probably remove some of that this coming weekend. Then I come over to the 75. Now you really can't see it, but one thing I do every day when I get home, that's one thing I'm a I'm picky about is I always clean the glass. That's enough of that. Checking out the 10 now. I've had a little hair algae issue. And what I do, I've been doing this daily, is I go in there with the forceps out of here. So this is where I keep all my stuff. You guys have seen this in here. So these are my forceps. They're really long. You've seen this before. I move this top to the side. And, oh, by the way, I moved my Higer Mini Wave to this side. What I was noticing is it wasn't overflowing. It wasn't keeping my water surface clean enough because it was pushing the water down this end from the opposite end. So now it's pushing the water this way and it goes over the overflow. My water surface stays nice and clear. No oily buildup on there. All right, so anyway, I go in with this. As I pull it off, I try to find a big chunk area. I pull straight up, so you can see it coming off. And then I use this to kind of clean the algae off with. So I do this every day, you guys, almost every day me doing exactly what I do. I come home from work, I check the tank out, I do it while I'm not too relaxed yet. If I get too relaxed, I'm not gonna wanna come back in here and do this. I'm gonna wanna come in and just sit and watch the tank or watch some TV. It's the only way if you really wanna get rid of hair algae quick, guys, is you have to help it along manually. And I also have added quite a few extra hermit crabs 
to help the case. And if you'll notice up in that back corner, come around here because of the, uh, this, this is, hold on. I had a bacterial bloom in here. So I had to put the green giant killer in here and it's helped. It's been in here about five days now. And what had happened is I ordered these hermit crabs and some astrea snails. And you guys know how I like hermit crabs for hair algae. I ordered quite a few. I think what happened is a few died off and this is such a small tank that I think the die off from the snails, I see more of the snail shells uh, laying around, probably caused the bloom. Right, I'm done with this. I've had this in for several days and I'm just gonna pull the UV out. And as I vlog, I'm gonna show you more, you know, how I do things from day to day and how things arrive. It might be fun for some of you guys. You know, some of you guys might find it boring and turn me off, but some of you guys may like it. So I'm going to take this out, just clean it, and then I put it away. I don't use UV 24-7 all the time. I only use it when I have an issue. I don't think I have to show you guys me cleaning this off. Look at the size of that leather coral now, guys. It's actually overtaking my green star polyp. So you can see, you know, having that window open, I notice my tank looks the best when I open up the windows. And this season is the best for that. You know, once the real heat comes around, then I have to close the windows and you rely on AC. Spring and fall are when the tank looks the best for me because I have a lot of fresh air coming in. And then I usually relax and watch a little YouTube, some news, some, this is Ted, just until uh, Sylvia checks in from Croatia. So, she said I will break into you tomorrow. Uh-huh, uh-huh. And uh, that's what I do in the uh, three o'clock hour. All right, this is how much and what I feed the fish. So this is the SA slow sinking pellets. I find that this is excellent. And what I do is I put just enough to cover the bottom. And then this is one quarter of the Marine Cuisine San Francisco Bay brand. Put a little tank water in there and I let that kind of melt. As far as the slow sinking pellets are concerned, I use my Cellcon. The slow sinking pellets are kind of porous. That's why they're slow sinking. So what happens is they soak up the Cellcon. And what I do is I put about seven drops in here. to feed now it's been about seven or eight minutes here it is i use this little spoon and i kind of just set it in here and let them go nuts on it they love this stuff i also feed all the tanks at this point so i have three fish in here if you guys recall i have a blue green chromis firefish and a lawnmower blenny i feed a little less in here 10 gallon with the two clowns in it I have an emerald crab in there. I also have a peppermint shrimp in there too, and they come out and take some of that. And down below, I feed the six gallon. This is all melted now. I kind of mix it up and I go in with that. Now remember, this is only a quarter of a cube, and I distribute this to all my tanks, put some in there, and the Smith's damsel doesn't get any of this. And that's my feeding regime, guys.